The Wild West is a place of daring feats, lawmakers and outlaws alike live by guns and die by guns. Among the most notorious figures of this era were the Earp brothers, Wyatt, Virgil, and Morgan, who were hailed as heroes in everyone's eyes. While Wyatt Earp's exploits are well known, his brother Morgan's life and tragic ending are often overlooked. In this article, we'll explore the forgotten hero of the Old West, Morgan Earp, and the events that led to his untimely death. Morgan Earp, like his brothers, is a lawyer and gunman in the Old West. Morgan was born on April 24, 1851 in Pella, Iowa. His father, Nicholas Porter Earp, a successful rancher and farmer, and his second wife, Virginia Ann Cooksey. Growing up in a large family, Morgan learned the value of hard work and perseverance at an early age. Growing up on the farm instilled him a strong sense of independence. When he was young, he was passionate about the idea of adventure and the Wild West aiming for such a good life. Remember to hit the like button, because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting video. When older brothers Newton, James, and Virgil left to fight in the American Civil War, teenage brothers Wyatt and Morgan were reassigned to manage the family farm. Despite their close relationship, James and Morgan shared a disdain for farm work and a shared thirst for adventure. In pursuit of this, young Morgan followed James to Montana, where he had been for several years before meeting Wyatt in the western frontier. In 1868, Morgan's father, Nicholas Porter Earp, moved the family back to the Midwest, settling in Lamar, Missouri, where he became a local policeman. Wyatt followed the family and was appointed a police officer after his father resigned to become Justice of the Peace. Not long after, Wyatt married Urilla Sutherland, but tragically, she died before giving birth later that year. Soon after, tensions flared up between Wyatt, James, Virgil, and Morgan, as well as Urilla's brothers and relatives. The situation escalated quickly into a violent street brawl, which lasted 20 minutes and resulted in injuries to both sides. Witnesses described it as a clash over smuggling by both families. In mid-1872, Morgan Earp happens to meet Louisa Alice Houston, daughter of H. Samuel Houston and Elizabeth Watho. Louisa is the second oldest of 12 siblings. Morgan quickly falls in love with her and they soon get married. In 1875, Morgan left his position as an attorney in Wichita, Kansas to become a deputy sheriff under Charlie Bassett in Dodge City. During this time, he worked alongside his brother Wyatt, who established himself as a prominent attorney in the area. Morgan's time in Dodge City was marked by a number of notable incidents, including a violent conflict with a local rancher that resulted in his death. Despite this incident, Morgan is generally considered a competent and well-respected attorney. In late 1877, Morgan and Louisa moved to Miles City, Montana, where they purchased a home. However, shortly after Wyatt and Virgil sold off their home in Tombstone, Arizona, Morgan and Louisa left their home in Montana and headed west. Morgan didn't think the desolate mining town of Tombstone would suit Louisa, a petite woman with rheumatoid arthritis, so he took her in with his parents in Colton, California in March 1880. Morgan made an appointment to meet his brothers at Tombstone on July 20th, 1880, and Louisa followed him in early December. In 1878, Morgan joined gold prospectors in the Bear Paw Mountains on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in northern Montana Territory. He is thought to have left Tongue River about three weeks before arriving in Miles City. General John Gibbon sent troops to the Teton River to prevent the miners from being slaughtered by the Indians. Morgan remained in Montana for an indefinite period of time. On December 16, 1879, he was selected as a police officer in Butt, Montana. There's a story that goes around that Morgan and Billy Brook were competing for the job of a cop and they got into a gunfight. But Brooks is said to have died at the hands of a lynch mob and Morgan is wounded. However, no modern documentation of the shooting has been found and other accounts report that Brooks died in some other way. Morgan only served as a policeman for three months until March 10th, 1880. Wyatt and Morgan Earp are no strangers to law enforcement and they continued their careers in Arizona where they took on a variety of roles as messenger gunmen for Wells Fargo Deputy Sheriff. The mayor of Pima County was the deputy of their brother, Virgil Earp. In December 1881, 
Wyatt was appointed Vice Marshal by United States Marshal Crawley Dake after Virgil was wounded. Wyatt trusted and appointed his brother Morgan as deputy. On October 26, 1881, tensions between the Earps and the Cowboys reached a peak in the town of Tombstone. For weeks, Ike Clanton, Billy Claiborne, and the other Cowboys had threatened to kill Earps. Field Marshal Virgil Earp learned that the Cowboys were armed in violation of city ordinance and had gathered near the OK Coral. On that day, Virgil Morgan, along with Virgil and Wyatt, responded to reports that the Cowboys were armed on the streets of Tombstone. Ike Clanton, backed by Cowboys Tom McLory, Frank McLory, and Billy Clanton, repeatedly threatened the Earps. Virgil asked Wyatt, Morgan, and Doc Holliday to assist him in disarming them. At about 3 p.m., Earps headed towards Fremont Street, where the Cowboys were said to be gathering. They faced off against five Cowboys on Fremont Street in an alleyway between Harwood House and Fly's Boarding House and Photo Studio, just six to three feet apart. Ike Clanton and Billy Claiborne quickly fled the gunfight, while Tom and Frank McLory and Billy Clanton were killed. During the chaos, Morgan was hit in the back by a bullet that broke both his shoulder blades and vertebrae, though he continued to fire. Virgil was shot through the calf, and Holiday was grazed by a bullet. The event became known as the OK Coral Gunfight, which has since become one of the most famous and often depicted events in the history of the American West. The Earp brothers seek refuge at the Cosmopolitan Hotel and hire a group of men to protect them and their families. This was a necessary measure because they had antagonized many people, especially after the infamous gunfight at the OK Coral. However, even with the increased security, tragedy still struck two months later. In December 1881, Virgil Earp was the target of an assassination attempt that left him permanently paralyzed in his left arm. This was a heavy blow to the Earp family, as Virgil was once an integral member of their team and a trusted brother to Wyatt and Morgan. Add into the family troubles, in February 1882, Morgan became aware of a potential danger to the safety of the Earps in Tombstone. He acted first and sent his wife Louisa to live with her parents in Colton, California, while he stayed behind to support his brothers. This was a wise move, as it turned out that Morgan himself would also be the victim of violence later that year. The events that occurred during this period of the Earp brothers' lives reflect the dangerous and violent nature of the Old West. It was a time when disputes were often resolved with guns, and one's reputation and honor were fiercely defended. At 10.50 p.m. on Saturday, March 18, 1882, Morgan Earp was ambushed after returning from a musical at Schifflin Hall. He was playing a late game of pool with friends at Campbell and Hatch Billiard Parlor when an attacker shot him through the top half of a four-pane window. Morgan was standing about three feet from the door when he was hit by a bullet that went through the spine and then into the thigh of mine foreman George A.B. Berry. Another bullet hit the wall near the ceiling above Wyatt's head. Morgan's brothers tried to help him to his feet, but he refused and said, No, I can't stand it. This is the last game of pool that I will play. They moved him to the floor near the door of the card room. The billiard shop opened onto a dark alley that ran through the block between Allen and Fremont Streets. Earlier that day, Morgan and his brothers received threats. The attacker painted over the bottom two windows of the billiards room, revealing only the top two. This allows him to target Morgan without being seen from the street. Dr. William Miller arrived at the scene first to take care of Morgan, followed by Dr. Matthews and George Goodfellow. Goodfellow, who would later be recognized in the United States as the nation's leading expert in the treatment of gunshot wounds to the abdomen, concluded that Morgan's injuries were fatal. According to the book, Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal by Stuart Lake, Wyatt Earp says his brother Morgan told him before he died, I can't see a damn thing. Wyatt reports that Morgan spoke of afterlife images as he neared death. The Earp brothers, along with their wife and family members, gathered around Morgan in the living room after he was moved from the shooting site. Unfortunately, Morgan's wife, Louisa, was not present because she was staying with her parents in Colton, California. Warren Earp wasn't there either because he was away at the time. Morgan died within an hour of being shot. It is important to note that there are varying accounts of Morgan's last words, with some historians suggesting that Wyatt's recollection may have been influenced by his desire to portray his brother as normal, calm down, and accept death. In addition, Lake's book has been criticized for its embellishment and imprecision. However, 
It remains a popular source of information about the Earp brothers and their life in the Old West. Despite these controversies, the death of Morgan Earp remains an important event in American history and continues to be studied and debated by historians today. After Morgan's death, his family dressed him in a blue Doc Holliday suit and held his funeral at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Meanwhile, Wyatt receives news that Frank Stilwell and his gang are planning an attack on the family in Tucson, so he assembles several deputies to protect them. Earps then relocated Morgan's body in a wagon to Benson, where they rented another wagon to the contention station of the New Mexico and Arizona Railroad. From there, they took the train to Tucson, where they found Stilwell waiting for them. Wyatt killed Stilwell in self-defense. Arabs continue the journey with Maddie, Allie, and Morgan to Colton, California, where Morgan's wife and parents are waiting for them. Morgan was first buried in the old Colton City Cemetery near Slover Mountain. In 1892, his body was reburied at Hermosa Cemetery in Colton. Morgan Earp is a forgotten hero of the Old West who played a vital role in maintaining law and order in the wild frontier. He was a dedicated lawyer, a skilled marksman, and a loyal brother. However, his life was tragically cut short, and his death left a deep scar on the Earp family and the entire Tombstone community. Despite his contributions to the American West, Morgan's legacy has been overshadowed by the myths and legends surrounding his more famous brother, Wyatt. His story serves as a reminder of the dangers and challenges America's early pioneers faced and the courage it took to maintain law and order on the unspoiled frontier. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.